uh, kind of become a kind of has become a thing with me recently is that I'll hear somebody say something or somebody preach you something, the Lord deals with me on it, and then I wind up cabbaging on it. And uh, I don't typically try to do that, but that's been the theme. It was that came up? Somebody gave me a hard time the other day about that. Said I still, I still maybe it's Blake. Said I still people messages all the time. No, you just preach on me all the time. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> throw stuff at Blake. Blake's here and he preach on him. Twenty-one. Say what? And then Blake's here and preach on him. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually preaching on on Caleb and Blake. And uh, we was with Brother Paul on Monday night among the other pastors in the district. And we. Uh, Brother Paul was talking about some things the Lord had been doing with him on and some messages oh, preaching. And he mentioned this and, and it really stuck out to me. And I've, uh, you know, kind of wondered and prayed all week about what we would be ministering on today. And, and time and time again, uh, this has, this is what the Lord's given me. And so, not to be still in Brother Paul's message, but uh, we'll give him credit for the inspiration, I suppose, or at least bringing it to my attention. 1 Kings chapter 21. A little bit of background as we get ready to read. We're not going to read too many verses. We can read the whole chapter, but it's not going to be necessary for what we need to talk about. King Ahab is the king of Israel at this time. There's two kingdoms. There's uh, Israel and there's Judah. Judah was uh, the lesser of two evils most of the time. And Israel's a pretty bad spot at the moment. King Ahab is on the throne. King Ahab is married to Queen Jezebel, and they're just about the two most rotten individuals that ever draw breath of air. Uh, they are foul little creatures. And Elijah is the prophet of the day, and Ahab hates Elijah. Ahab hates Elijah about as much as a tree hugger hates coal, you know? And they had no regard for one another. And I don't know if Elijah hated him or not, but he definitely never gave him no mercy. I know that much. And But Ahab certainly hated him. And there's more than one verse, more or less. And Jezebel wasn't a big fan of him either. She tried to kill him at one point in time. But we find that Ahab's on the throne. He is ruthless, cold, uh, manipulating, idol worshiper. That lays all things vile. All things vile. And Jezebel is wicked and ruthless as well. And as a matter of fact, she probably was meaner than Ahab was. At least Ahab would occasionally cry out to God like he did at the end of this chapter. But Jezebel never, never turned an ear. And so we pick up in chapter 21, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria, which was Israel. Samaria was the capital city of Israel. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for my garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Yeah. So in other words, if you miss some of that there, Ahab had a palace, Naboth had a vineyard. Right. Must have been a pretty decent little vineyard. Yeah, yeah. And it was right up next to Ahab's property. And Ahab said, I want that so I can put me a spice garden in there. Right. I don't know who the world wants a spice garden, but he wanted a spice garden. Yeah, and he said, I'll give you better than what you've got now. Yeah. I'll give you money for it or I'll buy you a new one. I just want yours. Yeah. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. So the Lord told me I couldn't give it away. Now, I could read the rest of this chapter. But we're not going to. We're going to stop right there. A, a lot of times we read, we read that chapter and we focus on how evil Ahab and Jezebel was. But tonight we want to focus on what Naboth did. Because see, God has given us all a vineyard. Sister Diane, He's given us all a vineyard. 
He's given us all a calling. He's given us all a work to do. And my work can't be done by anybody else. Now, if I squander it, Sister Millie, he'll take my gifts and he'll give it to somebody else. We got proof of that in the parables of Jesus Christ. But yet, even at that, there's things that I can do and touch that God has laid out for me that nobody else can put their hands to. The gifts and the callings are without repentance, Sister Anna. And I can't get out of it. And old Ahab came after what God had given Naboth. Let's turn this metaphor around. That Ahab would be Satan and we would be Naboth. And how many times has Satan offered us something better than what we've got right now? How many times has Satan come to us and he said, Listen, I'll buy from you what you've got and I'll give you more. Even when he tempted Christ in the, in the, after the 40-day fast in the wilderness, he tempted him with power. He said, Look, behold, all the kingdoms of the world. That's right. And I'll give them everywhere. They're mine to give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give them to you. Come on. Come on. But listen, while I can do what a lot of people do, and Naboth even had the same decision, he could have given it to Ahab. Like, he could, the Lord has told us not to go back on it. The Lord has told us not to give our, give our gifts up. But Naboth, Naboth had that choice. That's right. That's right. And we have that choice too. And you know what? When we make that choice, we're rewarded. Come on, come on, come on. We're rewarded for that, and I think we all know that. I, I backslid on God. I was rewarded for my backslide. I, there's pleasure in sin for a season, and I want you to know I watered in it full of I found every pleasure I could get my hands on. Come on, son. There's pleasure in sin for a season. Sure there is. But you know what? The calling that God gave me, He still wanted me in that thing. That's it, son. What I had squandered and what I had given up, Tom, God wanted me to have back. Come on, son. And Naboth had that decision right there. Yeah. That he could give it all up, but he made the decision not to. That's right. And God is wanting us to understand tonight that we don't need or that He don't want us to give up what God has given us. Come on, son. And, and, and see, listen, there's a small group in here tonight for a reason. And I do not know what any, anybody really is going through in this room, but I really have to believe that if God is dealing with me on this topic, if there's some of us struggling in here tonight with something. Come on, son. And listen, I've got a choice that I can make when I'm presented with the temptations of the world. I can, and, and listen, temptations, we talk about temptations like it's always pleasure that leads us away from God. But I'm going to tell you something. It ain't always pleasure that breaks us down. That's it. That's it. That's it. The, the trials of the world sometimes can weigh on us more than anything else. Correct point. Right. You know what? The world don't offer a lot that, that gets me down, sister. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I ain't never tempted. But the world, I, I can often remind myself and say that it wasn't worth it then and it ain't worth it now. But I want you to know when things don't, don't go right and things ain't going my direction, <coughs> Blessing, when blessing, when blessing, things ain't going my direction, when my bills are getting struggled to get paid, when my business ain't doing what I want it to do, on, when I got people unhappy with me, come on, you're know talking about when there's sickness in my family or death in my family or, or there's trials. You know what, Sheila? That's a lot harder time to hang on sometimes than when we're in the middle of temptation. That's it, son. That's right. God's so the temptation comes in the form of us letting go. And you say, you know, well, you know, Naboth wasn't tempted with the bad things. Wait a minute. He was tempted with the good things. What Ahab right. said, he said, I'll give it to you, but let's fast forward to the end of that chapter. Right. And oh, Ahab, being the little spoiled brat that he was, he gets all down and uh, down out and whining about it. And Jezebel says, Why are you whining? Why, what's the matter, honey? And he says, I want Naboth's vineyard. And she said, Well, ain't you the king? And he says, Yeah. He, she said, Well, I reckon we can find a way to get it. And so he said, you know, she said, just don't get up, clean yourself up, and put your smile on, and I'll take care of the rest of it. And so she sends letters to the people who would have been his elders, yeah. uh, his leaders, yeah. undoubtedly his friends. Yeah. Naboth was a good man. Yeah. And she said, call a trial, if you will, for Naboth, uh -huh. and get a couple of bad men to come in and lie on him. Uh -huh. 
and, and have him say that he blasphemed against God, yeah. and then we'll stone him, yeah. and Ahab can have his finger. That's exactly. And I want you to know that's what they done, Sister Sheila. Yeah. The elders of the the elders of that city come of on. Jezreel. Come on, come on. And we're going to talk about what Jezreel means in a minute. But the elders of that city got together. And they had a fake trial, and these two men come in and swore lies on him. Yeah. And then they took him out and they stoned him. Yeah, that's right. Listen, that ain't the temptation on the good side. That ain't the no. pleasure in sin for a no. season. Naboth had right there, Sister Andrea, the opportunity to deny God. He had the opportunity to let go of what God had given him. He had the opportunity to turn his back and say, Listen, I don't want to die. Ahab can have the vineyard for all I can. That's it, right. That's it. But Naboth had his mind made up, Caleb. Come on, come on, come on. Where he said, you know what? I don't care that you lied on me. That's right. I don't care what you've done to me. That's right. I don't care what I'm facing. That's it. I'm not giving up what God has given me. That's right, amen, That's right. Amen. That's right. I'm not giving up what God has given me. Amen, that's right, that's right. See, it's all too easy for me to grow cold on God. It's all too easy for me to walk off from God. Yeah. It's all too easy for me to get caught up in the world and want more of the world than I want God. Yeah. Come on. Somebody ought to hear me tonight. Yeah. I ought to hear God tonight. He you ain't believe me. God, God don't believe you. Come on. That's absolutely right. It's all too easy for us to say to face that problem. Mm -hmm. That's it. But Naboth was rooted and grounded. He said, God's already told me yes, sir. that I can't give it up. That's right. And I'm going to tell you something. He's already told us tonight that we can't give it up either. That's right. That's right. You say, but I have that choice. He had that choice too. But God's told me not to give it up. We're fighting a good fight. We're keeping the faith. Come on. Come on, son. I like what the word Jezreel means. Give it to him, Lord. I was reading that today. I clicked on my strongs. Jezreel means God sows. Yes. God sows. Yes. What Naboth was about to give up was what God had sowed That's for right. him. Yes. The crops what the Naboth was about ready to surrender to Ahab exactly. was what God had blessed him with. That's right. What God wanted to grow in his life and had planted in his life, Naboth had the chance to squander. Come on, you come see, on. I had a chance to squander it too. He called me to be a minister and a preacher long before I got on board. Yeah. But I backslid and I squandered that, Sister Anna. I took the seeds that he had sowed in my life and I had thrown them to the side, Brother yeah. Robbie, yeah. and I didn't want anything yeah. to do with them. I sold my inheritance for something that I thought was more fun and better at the time. But glory to God, when he... Mm, Boy, I tell you what. Fire's moving tonight, son. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> give it to him, Lord. Give it to him. Jezreel out means sown of God. Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, God, when He created us, Sister Millie, He created us with a purpose in our life. That's it. He created us with an idea, Brother Tom, of what we could do for Him. He created something inside of us, Brother Caleb, that made us all new, all unique. And, and you know what? One of us might sing, and another one might clean the church, and another one might go out and serve those who are hungry. But glory to God, there's a group of people that He sold into our lives that only what he sold in my life is able to touch. And Naboth knew that he was the only one in that vineyard that could make the wine that came out of that vineyard because that's what you get out of a vineyard tonight. You, you ain't after the grapes, glory to God, but you're after the wine that comes out of it. And the wine is a representation of salvation and blood. And Naboth knew that he was the only one that could stand, glory to God, in where God had sold him at and can make the kind of wine that needed to be made for a certain group of people, glory to God, that needed to hear from Naboth. They needed what Naboth was making yes. out of that vineyard yes. because God had sold into Naboth's yes. life. God had called him to a purpose. Yes. God had given him a vineyard to raise a 
on his own. Come on, come on. Yes. Give it to him, Lord. Glory to God. Mm. Ahab wasn't going to make the wine no. out of that vineyard that Naboth was going to make. The meat of the word, son. The meat of the word. Come on, man. The meat of the Ahab word. had no intention of doing it. I'm going to go a step farther. If you go on and read, oh, Elijah comes out after Naboth is dead. I'm, I'm skipping ahead. We're going to get to him dying Come in a minute, on. I think. But he tells oh, Ahab, basically, he says, boy, you just messed yourself over. Yeah, yeah. He said, they're going to lick your blood. That's right. Goes on to say the blood of his children mm -hmm. from around where this vineyard is. That's it, that's it. And the man who took the vineyard Glory to God, he might make some of the same wine, but it's not the same wine that Naboth is going to make. No, that's right. God sent me over here. This is an example. Come on, come on. God sent me over here to be a pastor. That's right. If I hadn't have taken it or if I fall off the wagon or whatever, there'll be another pastor. That's right. Sir. But he's not going to be able to do exactly what God sent me no, here to do. No, no, no. He'll do a form of it. That's it. Something similar. That's right. That's Sister Miller, it won't be the exact same thing. That's right. He'll be close. Say, so why? That's because we're people, not because right. he's, he fell as a God. It's because we fell as people. That's right. Sir. That's right. And Naboth understood something. Come on. Come he on. understood that his fathers had given him a vineyard in which he needed to make a wine, yeah. in which he needed to tend to and take care of. Glory to God. And you see, we've all got that in our lives. Come whether on. we're currently working in that vineyard or whether we're struggling to figure out what that vineyard is, we're all Jezreelites yeah. by the birth of Jesus Christ and yeah. saved into. Glory to God that he drafted into the tree of the Jews. Yeah. We're Jezreel, Jezreelites. Yeah. We've been sown into by God. That's right. That's right. God has sowed something in our life. And Come Satan on. wants us to trade what God has given us yeah. for something that he says is better. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Worldly pleasure, son. Worldly pleasure. Now, Come Amen. On. Come, on. Come on. Can we get tempted? Yeah. And we're tempted to. We get tried. We, right. we get questioned. So How many of them ever questioned God? Yes. How many of them ever there, questioned God? I, you know, I, I like to say that I've not, but I, I have, and sometimes I still do. Yep. I've even said things to him like, God, I know you know better, but I'd sure like to understand what in the world is going on. For real. Been there, done. Really? Been there, done, mate? I just like an idea, man. Yep. You know, I just, I'm cool with you doing whatever, but I just like to know just. Just a little bit, man. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to tell me everything. I just like to know just, just a little bit. And I'm serious. Yeah. Give me some points. I've had those conversations. Tom walking around the middle of the night. Like, dude, I know you're up to something, but I just, just a little bit. Yeah. All things work for the good of those that love the Lord. That's awesome. But I like just to those that are called really according to his purpose. We're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. Let me tell you something. I struggle with that whole walking by faith thing all the time. You know, I walk looking at the ground most of the time because I'm not coordinated enough to walk without looking at the ground. You know, and so in my Christian walk, I find that I want to see what's in front of me, but God don't always lay it out that way. But yet, I know enough about God to know this, that God has a call and a purpose in my life. And if I'm not currently living, he, living it, He wants me to be living it, and He don't want me to sell it for something in the world. Take the blinders off. Now. Man. Come on. Point to us is that if we're not living in the vineyard, that God wants us to live in, we need to move. That's it, sir. We need to change our life, Sister Millie. We need to get up and tend our vineyard. Yeah, that's right. You know, that, that may come in different forms for me. I'll use me because I can't speak for you. But I'll speak for me. I'm a husband. I'm blessed to be a father. Yes. Blessed to be a husband for that matter. I'm blessed to have a youth group. I'm blessed to be a pastor. Amen. I'm blessed to have a work Amen. in which that we can pray for people. Come on. And that we can we can minister to people. And those are my vineyards. Yes, yes. Maybe that's all my vineyard, and I'm working, but however you want to put that, more than one or the same, I will consider it the same for the sake of conversation. That's my vineyard. Come on. And if I'm not doing my part in any one section of that vineyard, then I'm failing a little bit. That's right. And if you fail a little bit, then you're failing a whole lot. But that's, that's a right. conversation for another moment. But God wants us to recognize what our vineyard is. And you say, Why? Well, I don't know what my vineyard is. You know what? Look at Sister Millie. We was talking about Sister Maynard. Sister right. Lorraine that comes. And Sister Lorraine's not well at the moment. Right. You know what? Sister Millie's vineyard might be as simple 
That's checking on Sister May. Yes. That that might be the whole reason she is where she is. Right. Is just to be able to take care of Sister Lorraine. Yeah. You know, we look sometimes for great big things that God wants us to do. But He said if you want to be the greatest, be the least. That's right. Be the least. And I would rather be able to give 100% in one thing than yeah. only give 90% in five That's it. That's right. And some of the most beautiful pieces of artwork are not from people who are artists by trade. Hey. But they're people who just one time express themselves. That's it. That's right. And they can produce some of the most beautiful things. Oh, really? One potted plant can be the most pretty thing in a house. Yeah. And it'd be the only plant in it. You see what God's saying this evening? Mm -hmm. We've got a purpose tonight. We've got a purpose tonight. And Satan wants to pull it out of us. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, if he's pulled it out of us, he wants us to get back to doing that's right. yep. what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Tending that wrong. vineyard. But you know, that's not always easy. No. Because when God has sowed into us and God has called us to Ahab, Satan will come to destroy us. That's right. Everyday struggle. And then we face some really hard things. That's it. Have you ever been backstabbed? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You ever had your throat cut by oh, people yeah. you didn't think yeah. would cut your throat? Yeah. yeah. Family turn on you? Yeah. Church members turn on you? Yeah. Come on. Amen. There ought to be hands up all over the place at this point in time. Men are done now. Yeah. Naboth. Naboth got turned on by everybody that was around him. We would assume they had a chance to recant or to make an argument. But we find that he never says anything. Perhaps like Christ. Yeah. We don't find his defense if he made one. No. But you know he could have easily said, hey, take it. But he had a choice. Jesus had a choice in the garden. He had a choice right there. That's what he was doing. He was praying his flesh over his objection in the garden. He was begging for his life. Daddy, I don't want to die. He had a choice. He went to the cross of his own free will. Not because God made him. Naboth could have given up his vineyard, but he kept it. Not because God made him, but because he wanted to please God. You kept your property from your fathers and that because that was what you'd done. That was part of their laws and their, their standards. That's how they live. You didn't give up your inheritance. I've got an inheritance in Jesus Christ. The, Paul writes and tells me that I am a joint heir with Christ. And if I'm a joint heir with Christ, that means I'm an equal heir. With I'm, I'm tied in to the throne. See, uh, glory to God, Naboth was a joint heir with all those in Jezreel at that time. He, he, had, he, was, a, he was tapped into the kingdom. I can squander that. Yeah. Right, we keep that. That's right. You wonder what the old boy thought when the two, they, they called them sons of Bill Uh-huh. And, and, and for a long time, and I remember reading this before and I've forgotten, but I was reading about the sons of Bill Lyle a few weeks ago in something that we had preached on. I think it was out of the book, it may have been out of the book of Judges or something there at, at youth one night, but anyways, it, the, the term came up again. And the sons of Bill Lyle was not a tribe. They, they wasn't they, they wasn't like you know the sons of Levi they right. weren't a the tribe right. that's just what they called bad people that's it we call them thugs uh, yeah. crooks yeah. bandits rogues yeah. villains yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about right yeah. low lives mob people mob people yeah. bottom feeders scum that's it. You, you know the type right yeah. we probably got them all in our family yeah. but anyways they, yeah. there's one or two in every bunch yeah. That's they, uh, the way, you know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We ain't going to go there. No. But the sons of Bill Isle wasn't a group of people. They were just bad men. That's it, son. Come on, man. It's saying who they was didn't matter. They're just thugs. Yeah. And you wonder what old Naboth thought when all of a sudden he's on trial. Come on. No doubt he knew. Sure. You, you, you reckon he figured that out by that time? You reckon he figured out Ahab had done cut his throat? And then boys come in lying and said, You blasphemed against God? Blasphemed against God. I just told the man I wasn't going to give up my birthright. Yeah. Okay. And see, that's what happens to us when people yeah. lie on us. Uh -huh. Come on. Or we're struggling. Come on. 
We're struggling in, in so many things in our lives, in our minds, our emotions. Come on, come on. Tell it, tell it, son. Tell it. Come on. We're struggling with our finances and our families. Talk about it, son. And we begin to be like Naboth and we're like, really? What's up? <clears throat> is what I've got, listen to this. This is a great question. Come on. Is what I've got really worth this fight? Come on. Uh, is uh, what I've got really worth this fight? You think about that for a minute. Is, is, is what I've got? You, you you reckon he thought that when they, they drag him to the outskirts of the city and they throw him out and they back up and they start to square up on him with rocks? And you know what? It was customary that they stoned people at that oh, point yeah. time. That he had wild. probably seen them die. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe he even had helped stone somebody in the past. But you know he had to know, Caleb, how bad it was. He had to know how hard it was to die by the hands of stone. And I would imagine all, not all them guys could throw Persecution away. Persecution was awful. I, I figure it had to take a while. Persecution was awful. It had to be awful. It had to be something. And you knew he was he knew he was about to die an awful death. Yes. You reckon he asked it? You reckon he said, is my vineyard really worth it? Is my call really worth it? Probably thinking it in his mind, man, you know. I, I mean, wouldn't you question? Question mark, exclamation point. point that's right, right there. There. Question mark, exclamation point. Yeah, and well, you reckon, you, you know, there was that story that came out of the Columbine shooting. And I don't know why this came to my mind. But one of the shooters, and Lord help their souls. Oh, yes. mercy, God help. He looked down at this girl and he said, deny Jesus. Yes. Oh, man. And she wouldn't do it. No, she, mm. wouldn't. she wouldn't give up her vineyard. No. That's right. no. She wouldn't give up the seed that's selling right. her life. Come on. Come on, sir. And that boy shot her. Yeah, because she wouldn't deny Jesus. You reckon, you reckon it ever entered her mind. Is my vineyard worth it? And I'm gonna tell you something. There's days that we get down and out, Sister Hannah. And there's days Come that on, we struggle, and there's days that we face battles. Come and on, sometimes we question and we say, God, is it even worth it? Yeah. God, why do I even serve you? God, why, why am I even putting forth this effort, God? Because I don't see no clear benefit. I don't see that my life is better. No I don't see that my bills are paid. Right. I don't see that there's a change on the inside of me. But God, there's chaos and destruction on every yeah. hand. Mm -hmm. There's no light at the end of the tunnel, so. <laughs> Come on. Somebody sent me a text today and he said, God just told me. That he's brought me through so much, and he said, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, Boy. and I can even walk through to get into the light. Hey. And I thought, Glory to God, because this young hey, man has been hey, battling hey, for so long, hey, and I was so glad to God, hear it. But we begin to ask ourselves that question. But you know what? I want us to be like Naboth tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I want us to be like Naboth and to realize, Sister Andrea, what God has sown in us is worth hanging on to. Right. Serving God is more than worth staring down the barrel of any gun That's exactly or down the arm of any man about That's to right. stone me. Don't Serving my God is worth it. What God has placed in my life, listen, what I've had seen, glory to God, what I have seen that God work through me is worth my life ten times over. To watch a young man or woman's life change in front of me is worth it, Brother Tom. And you said, was it worth your mistakes? Yeah, it was worth my mistakes. Right. Trust me, I'd go back and fix a milli if I could because I hurt a lot of people that didn't need to be hurt. Yeah. Not to mention myself, but I'm the least of those I'm worried about. Yeah, that's right. I'd go back and change them. But Sister Andrea, since I've got in my vineyard and I started making the wine that God allows me to make with the recipe He gave me to make it, yeah. Sister Salee, it is worth more, glory to God, than oh, any yeah. life that I can draw into my lungs to see those lives change in front of me. Come on. I want to be a Naboth that says no matter what I face and what I come against, it's worth it. Glory to God. I know a lady who's had MS for 30 some years and yet she goes and ministers almost every Saturday in a nursing home to the point that her husband will wheel her around in a wheelchair and she'll go in every room and pray for every little old lady and man in that building and her husband will sing until he can't sing no more. Come on. And she says and she would say that everything I feel in my body is worth being able to do the work of Jesus Christ. The wine that I can make from the seed sown on the inside of me is worth more than anything the world has to offer.
offer. Yeah. It's worth more than anything Satan can grab me with. It's worth not more. Glory to God. Not more than what Christ can do. Hallelujah. It's worth more than everything. There you go. There you go. It's worth more than everything. There's no silver. There's no gold. There's nothing the world has to offer. Glory to God. That is worth what God can do. What would you give? What would you give? Come on. Give unto the Come on. That's what the motor cost will say when they walk in. Silver, gold, how do I know? The Lord has me pray that so many times. There's nothing that's worth buying. And I'm going to tell you what else. There's no trial. There's no trial that's worth giving up on God. There's nothing that, that, would, that, that is worth me giving up my being. There's no situation God can't fix. Amen. Come on, Sean. Now. And you say, but Sean, my vineyard's a little messy. Well, God can work on that. Oh, yeah. He specializes in messy vineyards. That's right. Son. He yeah. does body work. He does body work. That's it. Amen. That's all right, that. Robbie. That'll preach. And, and, and it's all right. And you say, well, Sean, I left my vineyard unattended. Well, I'm going to be real honest. I left mine unattended for about a decade, and I had all kinds of things I had to get out of there when I got back. Glory to God. But you know what? When it was cleaned out, it's a pretty blasted good vineyard. Yes, sir. That's right. And not because I'm in it, but because God's in it. That's right. Amen. Not because I sold the seeds, but He sold the seeds. God's number one, Sean's number two. That's right. Now. How long did it take you to get the vineyard cleaned out? Well, there's still a couple of corners I'm working on. Come on, son. You still have a little weeds. We got some weeds in there, but man, we got some pretty good rows of grapes in there. We're making some pretty good, pretty good wine, if you will. But but it ain't no boast to me because I can't do nothing. No. I can only do what Christ allows me. That's right. But I'm gonna tell you. I thought this year I mentioned earlier. About this year hadn't been good for my health. It ain't been horrid or nothing. But in my scale of bad health years, this is the worst. I know what you're saying. And it ain't nothing in comparison to what other people's going through. I'm not taking any away from I'm just talking about just me. And I've thought more than once that while I'm weak in my God, my body, God can be strong. That's right. That's right. I am weak. He is strong. He is strong. That's and right. I thought, Lord, if you've got to break me down. I thought, God, if you've got to break me down. Come on, brother. In order to get you work done, that they can see you more clearly. Yes. Right. Break me down. Yeah, that's right. As long as I've got lungs yep. that can push out noise, I'll give him praise. Come on, son. Come on. Come on. Get as long as I can do something, Sister Millie, I want to be able to give yeah. him praise. But I'm going to be honest with you, I think about my life, I think about old Naboth, and sometimes you question Sister Diane, and it's easy for us to boast and say, I wouldn't give up, but I'm going to tell you, when you're staring, staring down the barrel of death, you know, your mind not begin to change, and I wonder, and I thank God, would I stand as boldly as I should? Would I stand as boldly as I should? Would I be a Naboth in the face of an Ahab and a Jezebel? And I like to think I would. But I intend for every breath I take not to be wasted. I pray that almost every morning. Every breath for you, Father God. I don't want to waste no oxygen from no trees on doing anything other than God's work. If, I, if the Lord made the way for me to get out of my business and go full time in the ministry and He's not led me to do that yet, but if He made that way and led me, I'd go, Sister Sheila. And I think I'd do it with, with clipping my heels and happy being. Glory to God. Be an Adam facing the walls of the devil. Come, Come on, man. Give it to him, Lord. But I'd love the opportunity with every breath to touch a life. Amen. Come on. To not have a waste. Yeah. Will we be a Naboth tonight? When we stand in adversity, will we be a Naboth? Will we give up our vineyard? And for that matter, if we have, or if our vineyard needs work, are we willing to let God fix it? Yeah, really. Amen? Come on, come on. Are we willing to let God fix it? Because only you can make the wine That's right. that God's made you. You know, it's all wine at the end of the day. Yeah. It's all salvation at the end of the That's day. That's right. But there's a group of people that I can touch that nobody else can. 
And there's a group of people that Andrew can touch that nobody else can, that Sheila can touch that nobody else can, that Kyle can touch that nobody else can. You know what, Sean? It's God's way, not our way. It was never about us, about us in the first place. It wasn't our way. Hey, uh, Kyle, why don't you find 10,000 reasons again? I, I know we sung it a while ago, but I feel like revisiting that. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to get burned out on that song. I don't know how long I've been up. I'm I don't matter. It. God has no time. Sir. He don't. But I feel like it's that point when we need to open this altar up. Yes. For us to say this, if your vineyard needs work, come work on it. Come talk to the man who can clean your vineyard.